Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Strong, the Chief Medical Officer of Virtual Radiologic, or VRAD. Thank you for joining me for this presentation on endotracheal intubation complications. Endotracheal intubation complications are common, especially in the emergency imaging world. So these are things that any radiologist engaged in emergency imaging needs to be constantly on the lookout for. I have altered the format of this presentation ever so slightly. This one will have a combination of radiographs and CT scans, each demonstrating uh, one of the various complications of endotracheal intubation. So we'll begin with this case of an absent endotracheal tube. This case came across with a clinical history of code. And importantly, our radiologist noted the presence of an AMBU bag. Now, of course, a ventilation bag can be attached to a mask as easily as to a tube, but in the setting of a code, one of the fundamental kind of primary events around which everything centers is endotracheal intubation. So when you see an emergent chest x-ray in that setting, it is wise to look for an endotracheal tube, and if you don't see one, to contact the clinical team and ascertain whether or not they believe one is present. That was the situation here. Our radiologist contacted the clinical team and determined that there was an endotracheal tube present. It was an attempted nasotracheal intubation, actually, and it was very highly positioned and inappropriate. So be vigilant and uh, don't expect to see the prompt endotracheal tube placement uh, every single time that that is expected of you. Our companion case here is a endotracheal tube, an endotracheal tube uh, highly positioned with the inflated cuff above the level of the vocal cords. So you can see as a distraction, there is a small compression fracture of the C5 anterior superior vertebral body with microfragmentation. But don't be distracted from the real finding, which is an inflated endotracheal tube cuff sitting above the level of the vocal cords. You can see on the next cut, there again is that inflated balloon with the tip of the endotracheal tube extending below the vocal cords, but still obviously you don't have a tight seal and are not delivering the positive pressure ventilation that is intended here. In addition, there's obviously a risk of damage to the vocal cords. Here on the axials, that particular rounded, uh, dilated, inflated cuff sitting between the leaves of the laryngeal cartilage should, should certainly draw your eye. Let's look at the cine. You can appreciate that inflated cuff. Again, far too high a position. In fact, on a cervical spine film, you should expect to, to only see the uppermost portion of inflated cuff if you see it at all, and it should be located, obviously, at the inferior aspect of the image set. All right, so that is an inappropriately high endotracheal tube placement. Our next radiograph also demonstrates a high placement of an endotracheal tube. But in addition, there is another complication here. So let's first note that high placement of the endotracheal tube. The appropriate positioning Our next case is a radiograph also demonstrating high positioning of an endotracheal tube, but there is an added complication present on this particular exam. So you can see that high placement of the endotracheal tube there well above the thoracic inlet, but in addition, there is an aspirated tooth, this one an incisor sitting at the origin of the left main stem bronchus. So there is the tip of the endotracheal tube, again, well above the thoracic inlet. The appropriate positioning of the endotracheal tube tip is five centimeters, give or take two centimeters, above the level of the carina. If you can't see the carina, it should overlie the T2 to T4 level. In all cases, the tip of the endotracheal tube should be below the thoracic inlet. If the patient's neck is in extension, the tip, to, the tip of the tube can be higher. 
and if the neck is in flexion, it can be lower. Let's look next at this aspirated incisor. This is a common complication of intubation due to inexpert wielding of a laryngoscope. It can knock a tooth loose, and then the placement of the tube often shoves it down into uh, one or other of the bronchi. In addition, as is a common finding accompanying these difficult intubations, uh, there is significant distension of the stomach in the left upper quadrant. So that is a high endotracheal tube placement with an aspirated incisor in the left main stem bronchus. Here is the CT companion case. Note the subcutaneous gas in the left neck consistent with a laceration. This, of course, is a trauma. In addition, you can see a tooth fragment here, a sizable tooth fragment, that has been pushed down into the supraglottic airway by the placement of the endotracheal tube. When we go to a higher cut, you can again see that soft tissue gas. And here is the source of that tooth. There is a fracture through the mandibular angle that is clearly passed through the rearmost molar there in the uh, left mandible. A fragment of that tooth remains in the socket, but the majority of it has been displaced down into the supraglottic airway. So here is that large tooth fragment with one of its roots. And that displaced mandibular angle fracture with a residual tooth fragment. All right, so that is an orofacial trauma with a mandibular fracture and a displaced tooth fragment pushed down by endotracheal tube intubation. This is a common complication of orofacial traumas. Nice demonstration. Our next case is one of esophageal intubation. This is a relatively subtle case, at least as far as the positioning of the endotracheal tube goes. But you can see that the tip of the endotracheal tube does not lie directly above the carina. And in fact, the entire tube does not quite overlie the tracheal air column, showing that it is in fact in the esophagus, even though at first glance it might appear to still be in the trachea. But secondary findings here are very helpful as well. You can see there is extensive esophageal dilation and there is marked distension of the stomach, all consistent with direct insufflation of the esophagus and stomach that results from this sort of inappropriate endotracheal tube placement. So that is an endotracheal tube in the esophagus. Our CT companion case another esophageal intubation, this one with significant aspiration resulting in left lower lobe atelectasis. And of course, uh, vomiting and aspiration are frequent complications of esophageal intubations. So here you can actually see the inflated cuff in the esophagus. And on a lower cut, you can see a great deal of debris related to aspiration sitting in the left main stem bronchus and left lower lobe bronchus. And lastly, you can see this atelectatic left lower lobe completely socked in with consolidation, most likely an obstructed airway full of debris and possibly even an aspiration pneumonia, although it might be a little early for that subsequent complication. Here again, the esophageal intubation, the debris in the left bronchus and the atelectatic left lower lobe. There's even some debris within the endotracheal tube itself, uh, suggesting it, it also uh, bore the brunt of some vomitus and aspiration. So that is an esophageal intubation with aspiration. That's a pretty common complication of an esophageal intubation uh, for many obvious reasons.